I'm Ella, and I'm dramatic and problematic. She's a Mona Lisa. Hi guys, and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. So, happy Halloween season, spooky season. You see, this is going to be our setup for Halloween, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, this is what we're working with from uh, till the end of the month. Today, we're going to be talking about Pretty Smart, which is a show that just premiered on Netflix. I think it came out like yesterday or the day before. I binged it all in like basically one sitting. And I was like, let me talk about it. I haven't really seen anyone talk about it. So let's get on it. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated with all my videos. And join the clown cult to be one of the clowns. So there's Emily Osment. Her character is Chelsea. She's like pretty smart. <laughs> I love the show. And she's moving to LA because her boyfriend is you know gonna be teaching at ucla she's moving with him so she can like start focusing on her book and like you know he's like financially supporting them she's getting there a few days before her boyfriend her sister lives in la so she went to stay with her sister that's the premise of the show right first off we're gonna start with the characters so first we have chelsea She's like a genius. She's this like really smart. I don't really know how old she is, to be honest. They don't really like say, but like she was dating a PhD student who just got into track for tenure. I don't think it was like a professor so far, but like it was someone teaching. I think she was a grad student at Harvard and she just graduated, but I'm not 100% sure. They're not like super clear on it. Even though like she's kind of like the main character driving the show, not my favorite character. I mean like I didn't hate her or anything, but she was kind of there and I was kind of like, there's episodes like later on in the show that are focused on other characters and I enjoyed those more than the episodes focused on her, if that makes sense. Has an issue with kind of taking action, like she has these plans that she wants to do but she doesn't act on them really. And she just kind of lets things happen to her and I mean, throughout the show, she improves on that. She doesn't do much in the show. She's writing a novel, and like that's <laughs> kind of her whole character. Then we have Claire. You think I'm dumb, but I'm not. I have a life that I love. She's like the second protagonist, I'd say. She's Chelsea's sister, and so she's kind of like that vain, blonde, like airhead character, which I wish they had done a little more to deconstruct that trope. They don't. It's kind of at face value, like, she's presented as stupid and she, it's never really disproven. Which, again, like, it's not a big deal. Like, there can be stupid characters, but, mm, mm. She's probably my least favorite character of the whole cast. She's just nice and stupid. Like, that's literally her whole character. She works at this, um, restaurant. And, like, the whole, like, running gag of her is that, like, her boss always tells her to do work she ends up like never doing work and like just talking to her friends leaving work at random times which i honestly though i do appreciate they made it into a joke because sometimes it shows like they actually do that and it's like that's just what they do and their job their bosses don't say anything it's like that's not how it works but like i'm glad it's like i i did think it was like a good joke and then she kind of has like bad dating history like she just is like always dating people but doesn't let it get too serious that's basically her character she's a really good person and she's a really good friend other than like her like romantic relationships and all that not someone who needs to change a lot and i do appreciate it it's like a character that needs to be there for other characters to play off do you have Grant? This is Grant. We used to date, but we had a mutual breakup, so now we're roommates. Which I think was the other selling point of this show. Greg Sulkin. I was like, oh my god, Mason and Lily are gonna get together? Like, what is happening here? And he is so hot. And they utilize his shirtless body. I was like, Jesus Christ, the fan service for women here. I was like, yes. Grant's character. He is a trainer at a gym. And he's one of Claire's roommates, and they also used to date. I think it was like two, three years before the show starts that they used to date. Like, just such a, like, golden retriever character. And it's like, it's too funny. His character is funny, 
his interactions with uh, the other characters are funny. Again, this character is kind of like bland, normal type of like love interest character. I mean, he is really sweet. He never does anything that I'm like, oh, you're an asshole. I appreciate it. Like so many love interests are assholes and I'm like, why? I want an actual nice boy. Even in the first episode, he's like sad or whatever because the Emily Osmond's character, Chelsea, calls him like, you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. And like, he doesn't get it. And he's like, I don't have a shed. And then he's sad about not having a shed. And so he has a threesome. And like, you can hear it very clearly. It's like alluded to and then they like, straight up say it, which I was like not expecting. But I'm like, I mean, it is a Netflix show. Like, they went there, and I like that they went there, and I like that it's not, like, a big deal. He doesn't really change much, either through the course of the, like, show. He's just really sweet consistently throughout, and that's basically it, to be honest. We will talk more about him later as well when we get into, you know, relationships. Then we have Solana. This is Solana. She's a healer. Who might be my favorite. Well, I don't know. She is um, this like spiritual. I don't even know what like her job really was. But she was like healing people's chakras, um, crystals, like all of that stuff. But she used to be a lawyer. And she, you know, she quit being a lawyer. And she became like really spiritual and whatever. But, you know... It's very much like that LA like vegan act like not not fake activism performative activism uh type of it's this there's this one scene where it's like a mosquito's like buzzing around her Bugs love vegans they can sense we're less threatening gotcha bitch which like it's just like the perfect juxtaposition of her character Later on, like, she also has this whole thing with, like, a rat and, like, she's super scared of it. Like, she's grabbing a knife to kill it. But then she's like, no, 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 no. We cannot murder animals. And this is, like, her character struggling with, like, wanting to be, like, this good person. Like, according to what, like, a good person is uh, by, like, societal standards. Like, being vegan, you know spiritual not killing you know all of that feels um performative to a level and i don't feel like it's not it's something that she wants to do but it's not something that she fully is it's just kind of like making herself be that way which i feel like it's very relatable like we all do like stuff because like performative and how it's seen and stuff so i thought it was a really interesting character to have she goes through a lot of like change in the season even though it's not like super big a plot in the storyline but i really did appreciate it and i think it's the character that i may yeah probably relate the most to and then last character jaden so wonderful for you to finally meet me jaden's an influencer no honestly i was like solana's my favorite but like i don't know jaden has to be my favorite and like at first glance it's he's his character is very much like the stereotype like gay best friend i think for the even first few episodes you'd be hard pressed to find contradiction that you actually get to see him like in the gay scene and kind of taking like clear in that and you know he's not like super comfortable with that and just like the way he like kind of keeps his like straight friends separate from his gay friends and yeah it's just it's very interesting i think there's like two episodes that are centered on him even like from episode one he alludes a lot about like his relationship with his mom because she was his manager growing up and it all builds up to like a big conflict which to me like it's not the main like conflict of the show but to me that was like the best conflict and you know it's like this whole episode center on him and his relationship with his mom which i thought was very beautifully done and he's just like you know, a lot of his story, like his main storyline that's with his mom is not centered on him being gay, which I like super appreciate. There's never a moment where he's like, you know, struggling with his sexuality. And that's so important to me because I feel like so many of the stories that we assume about gay people is just about them coming out and just like how it's hard for them in the closet, stuff like that, which yes, we need that. But I've seen that, like Love Victor or Simon or whatever. I don't know, Love Simon. I think that's the movie. 
I've seen that. I've seen that a million times. I don't need that again. I need characters that are just gay and don't need to explain that. Like, I think it's well done how they treat him as a gay character and I was like very like into it and I just related and like they actually put some like queer fucking references and I was like, okay, like I'm, I can jive with this character. Um, and now let's talk about the main plot thing of the show, which now if you have not watched the show, I implore you go watch it. I've tried to not see any spoilers as I'm talking about the characters and stuff, but now I'm definitely gonna get into spoiler territory. So if you do not wanna hear spoilers, go watch Pretty Smart, it's so good. If you don't mind watching it and getting spoilers, so the love triangle. Why are women always pitted against each other in shows? Ah! You know, I knew it. I saw it coming the moment, like, okay. Let me, let me backtrack a little. So Grant and Claire used to date, right? Claire has this thing where she only, she doesn't get two, six weeks of dating anyone. So she'll date them for five weeks, four weeks, something like that, right? And Grant, they say it's like a mutual breakup, right? But then first episode, we find out at the end of it. No, he's still in love with her. Um, and they dated for five weeks and six days. And like he ends up telling her how he feels because you know and she turns them down but it's pretty clear that she still has feelings for him she starts dating someone else and at the same time Emily Osmond's character Chelsea has been into him the whole time and you know it's it's developing more feelings for him and they are they become really really close friends they're working together and they genuinely grow to have this like connection and friendship that like I'm like yes I do this is not like just a one-sided crush or anything like you can tell these two people genuinely care for each other and I'm here for it right happens in the last episode that Claire is like I still have feelings for Grant <laughs> okay so editing me here and I just realized I did not do a very good job of explaining the whole situation leading up to the finale Grant and Chelsea in the penultimate episode they're about to kiss and like it ends and you think they kiss but then you know it turns out they didn't they were interrupted and they end up not kissing and um grant's like hey like i really like you it's not just like a kiss thing and i want to date you and she's like hey i don't know if my sister's gonna be okay with that i don't think this is gonna work and then he's like no she's about to meet her boyfriend's parents today so she's definitely moved on this is She's never had a relationship this serious and you should talk to her. She spends the whole episode trying to find her sister to talk to her. And then Claire breaks up with her boyfriend and kisses Grant and, you know, <laughs> Chelsea walks in after she doesn't see them kissing and is like, I need to talk to you, Claire. And like, that's literally the end of the show. See, I'm here for like the drama of like, I don't know i'm not here for the drama i i just don't like this like this didn't need to be the central point of the show like yes the characters could have gotten together but i just didn't need like a love triangle i'm sorry i didn't need a love triangle and especially not between these two sisters that's the main point of the show their bond or whatever and i really did like their bond it develops nicely but like having them be in this love triangle literally is not cute it's not fun i it doesn't add anything to me for the show and it just like it's it's for drama and like that's why it ended on a cliffhanger so people tune in for season two but it's cheap to me i don't think we needed that i'm sorry i don't like it i i'm so sick of women being pitted against each other in shows especially sisters like I, it's just not what i enjoy and like up until the moment that she kissed grant well even that last episode because i knew it was gonna happen i was like I enjoyed the show so much up until that and I was like great like do this do this because because we don't have enough of this on television already so yeah that, that's my opinion but before I go let me talk to you this show was so funny I laughed so hard I don't like again if you're here spoilers the best thing I was like laughing was um <laughs> when uh, Chelsea 
she gets a call from her boyfriend who breaks up with her and she comes back into the group and she's like Dwayne just broke up with me and Jaden's like The Rock? Johnson? Like what? That was my favorite and they do have like these little running gags but they're not like super obvious and they don't like overdo it so all in all it was like I don't know if like this is a sub sitcom or whatever yeah it is a sitcom because it has a laughing track it was it was pretty good for a sitcom i did laugh a lot the, i'm smart you're dumb i feel like that was like not utilized that much it's not like the big sticking point of the show to me so like honestly it's called pretty smart i don't think it it could have been called something else like it, it the premise is like the least of it i think it really just focuses on these characters in the relationship with each other and it's really heartwarming and yeah if you're here if you made it to this point and you haven't watched it yet like go watch it it's actually a really good show and i mean like i said i didn't like the last bit i think it's just too much i i just don't need these storylines anymore like i'm good with like the whole i don't need love triangles especially with sis like two sisters and a guy like no why are you pitting them this meal. That's basically what I think. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with all my videos. Enjoy the cloud gold. I'm trying to plug up the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's gonna be me for today. So yeah, I hope you're having a fantabulous day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you guys. I love you guys so much. Picasso, she brushing against my hands. Seen you from around the way, you didn't give me the time of day. You be making moves that yeah, who really care what Simon say? All the bad things, girl, I had to look past that. Call yourself a dime, I'm just trying to get my cash back. You